back to the channel. I'm Mordai J, and we are locked in. This is the recap for Power Book 2 Ghost, Episode 10, the series finale. Now, let me be honest. I was expecting this to be over the top, but then I took a step back after watching the episode and said, this is a business, and what they did was set up a lot of potential spinoffs in case they ever want to double back. So they kept a couple of characters alive, and then also, we seen Tariq making a phone call. So check out my video that I dropped yesterday called What's Next for Tariq? The spinoff. But before we jump into this and we break down episode 10, if you like power content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions like this, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. Now, this is it. It's all over with. R.I.P. to Monet and Tariq, he finally bossed up. So let's jump into it. This is the recap for the series finale of Book 2 Ghost. We start the episode off right where we left. The coroners, they're shipping Monet's body out of here. We're looking at Drew, Diana, Kane, and they're all sitting around moping. RIP to the queen pin that never was, Monet Tejada, and the kids, they're devastated. But the police, they get to asking questions because a shooting of this magnitude and all of these bodies that drop, questions need to be answered. And these three, they're the only ones around. But of course, the Tejada kids, they're sticking to the G-code and they're not telling the police anything. Kane gets up and looks the police in the eye and looks at them and says, I ain't telling you nothing because I don't know nothing. And why don't you do your job? Kane is very, very emotional, but you can see the Tejada trio, they're coming together. They're about to try to be an unstoppable force and go straight after Noma. Tariq and the crew who were abandoned by Monet, they're sitting here trying to figure out what are we going to do with Don Carter? So all three of them are going back and forth and you hear Don Carter asking Tariq, what are you about to do? Well, Tariq wants to unalive him because of all the stuff they've been through. But Don Carter's like, you know, if you do that, you're going to be in some deep doo-doo. So Tariq is like, damn, he's right. Plus, he didn't already told Effie and Brayden that there is footage of him and Brayden unaliving Zion. So they need to come up with a plan. Tariq ends up calling Davis and saying, Davis, uh, Don, we got him here, but the plan didn't work. And Davis lets him know, well, Monet is unalive. Wait, Monet's unalive? And now Don Carter has footage of me and Brayden? And Davis is like, yeah, so he has dirt on you. You're gonna have to figure out something. So this has Tariq's mind racing. What can I do? What can I do? Because they need to make it quick before the police force comes and looks for Don Carter, who's been missing for a while. Well, Tariq goes to Effie and Braden, and he convinces them, listen, there is footage of us unalive in Zion. You guys are gonna have to go break into his house, erase the footage. You're gonna have to do that like right now, as soon as possible. Now, Braden doesn't wanna be involved in this, but of course he's on the video also. And even Effie's thinking, wait, man, I'm trying to get out the game, man. All right, all right, we'll do it because when you think about the bigger picture, they have kidnapped a police officer. So this is gonna be bad for everybody. Plus the Felicia body can be put on any one of them. At home, the Tejada trio, they're all arguing with each other. Moneza, she dead because of you, Kane. No, 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 she dead because of you, Drew. No, 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 it's all because of Diana. So everyone's looking for someone to blame. They gotta get this off of their chest. This is the only way that the family can come together. So at this point, is everyone blaming somebody? But then at the same time, we're laying everything out on the table and we're trying to figure out what's the next move because we have to go after Noma and everyone is feeling the same way. And this is where Diana decides to step up and tell him, listen, no one makes a decision for us. We gonna do what we need to do. So let's get focused, wipe away those tears and let's get out there, Kane. Let's go do this for Monet. We all had our differences, but we need to set those aside because Noma, she's gonna have to pay for what she did. Braden and Effie, they get on the move over to Don Carter's house. And when they get in there, Effie's straight to work on the laptop. In the back room, Braden's walking around trying to find any dirt they can find on Don Carter. Now he does see his wife's dresses and he's asking silly questions. Like, do you think Don Carter dresses up like this? Effie's like, Braden, shut up. But when he goes back into the kitchen, he sees that Effie is really putting in that work. Now, the only problem is the file, it can't be deleted off of this laptop because it's on the foul at work. Now, they do find Kamal Tate's police report. Now they don't know what exactly they're looking for, but they know that he is a cop 
and they see that in his search history, he kept bringing up Kamal Tate's police report for his unalive. Don and Tariq are going back and forth. Don saying, Tariq, you know you done messed up. There's nothing you can do. You might as well let me go. Now, Tariq is stalling because he knows that Braden and Effie, they're trying to get some kind of information, some kind of dirt. Well, once he finds out about the Kamal Tate, he's not 100% sure, so he's kind of throwing that bait out there. Hmm, what about Kamal Tate? Did your wife know that she married a murderer? So Don Carter, he's falling for the trap. Tariq's not for certain what exactly happened, but now it's all coming together. Don Carter unalive Kamal Tate, and Tariq has figured that out. Noma and her brother Chindu, they're having a conversation about leaving right now. Now she's packing up, and he's like, we don't have time to pack up. We need to book this flight, and we need to get the hell up out the country, go back to Nigeria. Now, when Noma goes to tell Anya this, she's like, I've never been to Lagos and all my life is here. You need to tell me what's going on. So Anya, we're seeing that she's really resenting Noma at this moment. And Noma's trying to play it cool, but she eventually loses it once Anya goes off. Get the F away from me, ma! And Noma's like, wait a minute, you're getting on that plane, even if I had to drag you by your ankles. Because they know they need to get up out of here. There's no reason to go to war with these lowlifes when they can just get up out the country and go back to living the lavish life that they had because their dad is a kingpin. Kane's in Monet's room, reminiscing, smelling her perfume, missing the times he had with his mother. And man, you know, hard times, hard times. But in comes Diana. She's looking at him and she sees that Kane is actually a human. He's not that tough guy he's been portraying to be. And she lets him know, hey, let's get ready to make moves. Bronze is ready. They got the guns, and let's go pull up on Noma. We know where she's at. Well, the Tejada trio, they link up with Cousin Bronze, and let me tell you, they get to it. Even I was clowning Bronze when I seen the first still shots from this episode, and I seen him standing there with the gun. But Bronze, he led the way, and they took out six bodies, only to get there, and Anya's the last one. And you know Kane, his finger, they itching, they itching. Yeah, that trigger finger, that is. Now the whole crew links up, the Tejada trio, Brayden, Effie, and Tariq. Now, they're gonna have to work together. So it's basically a cross agency. They said, listen, we got Don Carter, but Drew, we need some help from you. We need you to go into the office and actually delete everything off of his computer. And since they have Anya, Tariq's plan is, let him go in there and talk to Anya so they can get the location of exactly where Noma is so they can hunt her down and we can kill two birds with one stone. So everybody, they get on their designated teams and we gotta hit that action button because it's go time. The plan for Anya was Tariq to come in here and rescue her. Now she's asking Tariq, how did you know where I was at? He's like, we don't have any time to talk. The best thing for us to do is to get you to your mom before Kane and them, who knows what they're gonna do. So they run out and then Kane chases after them and he starts shooting at the truck. Now, obviously he's not trying to hit them because they need Anya to give up this information. So while they get in the car, Anya calls Tariq out saying, you've been lying to me about who you are. He's like, listen, I'm just trying to survive out here. She said, are you gonna be a drug dealer like your dad? Is that what you are? He said, listen, I've done some things that I didn't wanna do, your mom has too, but the only way for you to survive is if we can get you out of this situation. Do you know where your mom is? She's saying, yes, take me here. Drew makes it to the precinct, and when he gets there, he needs to talk to Don Carter. But remember, Don Carter, he got let go by Tariq and them, so he could go try to figure out this Kamal Tate situation and save himself. So while Drew is in here, he starts to upload this thumb drive, which is going to erase all the data off of this MacBook, basically factory resetting it, and it won't show anything pertaining to the footage that they have. The only problem is, Nico is a little bit suspicious, and he's walking around trying to find Don Carter. Don Carter's in the evidence room trying to find that bullet that took out Kamal Tate, but in comes Nico. As I mentioned, he's very, very cautious about what goes on, and he's a little anxious, wondering why is, wait a minute, why is your face cut up, Don Carter? And why is Drew here to talk to you? Now Don, he's acting like he doesn't know what's going on, but he's like, well, if Drew is here, let me, let me go talk to Drew. So Nico is very suspicious, but remember, Nico took that money. So Nico, we don't know what side he's really on. 
Tariq ends up dropping Anya off at her mom's spot and you hear Anya tell Tariq before she gets out the vehicle, I don't wanna be like you. And as she's walking up the stairs, Kane, Diana were following Tariq so they could see where Noma is and Diana hops out the car and gets the firing. Paco, paco, paco. Anya catches a couple of them to the back. Noma is screaming in the all white. The Gucci loafers that Anya had on had no traction. She's falling down the stairs. The guards come out. They get to shooting. Diana and Kane, they run off. Tariq got to get out of here. But now Diana said, at least Noma knows how it feels. Once they get back to the warehouse, Tariq is upset. Diana pretty much blew the whole plan by taking out Anya when they were sneaking up on Noma. So now they need to rearrange the pieces on the board and figure it out. Now, Tariq is talking to Drew. I need you to go and do what you're supposed to do. I delivered you guys Noma and you guys messed it up. So this Don Carter situation, we need to make it happen. You need to convince Nico or Don Carter somehow so we can set somebody up because right now, we're in the limbo from the plan it sounds like drew went to go talk to nico and nico went to talk to don carter hey drew is going to set Tariq up for us all you have to do is take the shot meaning you got to go over there with drew he'll lead you straight there and then boom you'll take the shot so the plan is drew goes to talk to nico who we already know took fifty thousand dollars from no man kane and he's potentially trying to set up don carter Don follows Drew to the warehouse, but when they get there, he can sense that something ain't right. So he pulls a gun on Drew, like you're trying to set me up. And out of nowhere, Braden pops up with a toolie. Tariq pops up. And now they're going back and forth. And it's just like training day. The only problem is, <laughs> Don ain't got that same kind of power. He's talking about, I'm gonna have all y'all locked up. Matter of fact, look, let me take out Nico for y'all and we could pin all the murders on him. The only problem, Nico had already flipped and he was with Drew and setting up Don Carter. So he comes out and tells Don, you're under arrest for unaliving a police officer. Dude, that's where we draw the line. We can steal from bad guys. We can kill bad guys, but killing one of our own? Nico says, put your hands behind your back. That's the end of Don Carter. You're under arrest. The Tejada Trio put together a plan to set up Noma. So Kane's like, look, we'll book a flight on her airline. So she'll think that we're actually trying to leave the city. Now, with Noma and her brother Chin, he's telling all the security, we need to leave. You're gonna die messing around with Noma. Now, once Noma gets this ping that there's a flight book from New York City to Atlanta, she's like, let's go to the warehouse. There they go. They're gonna be at the hangar. We can catch them. But even brother Chin is like, this is just too, it's just too easy. This has to be a setup. But Noma, she's in her own corner and she's trying to avenge her daughter's death. And just like brother Chin said, it was a setup. It was a setup. Noma shows up with the police and we're wondering, how are the police back in Noma? Drew and Diana, they end up getting arrested. Kane, he hides. And out of nowhere, he pops up behind Noma talking about, can you save me the last dance? Well, he really said, <laughs> we never got that last dance. And he said, I'm gonna be the last thing you see. She also says, you could have had everything. He said, I had everything and you took her from me, his mother. And then boom, RIP Noma. Well, it turns out the whole time, Noma had turned state, meaning she's a snitch. She was married to, well, she was involved with Dante. He was a snitch. So Jenny Sullivan is here. Blanca Rodriguez is here. And Jenny drops all of the complaints about Davis. Davis is saying Noma is the, the queen pin of the organization. This is who you wanted. So I need my license back. Now, Blanca, she's like, wait, so Tariq is just going to walk free? And they're like, yeah, Tariq has nothing to do with this. Noma is who you wanted. At the warehouse, Kane ended up getting shot while he was shooting at the police, and now he's the most wanted man in New York City since Noma's off the map. Now, Effie is taking care of him, and she was supposed to go to Stanford, but instead, she tells Kane, you need to get on the run. And Kane's like, damn. So what does she do? All the money she's been saving for these last four seasons, she gives it to Kane, so Kane can go on the run. Now, we hear him say, I promise I'll pay you back. So that may be an, also an indication of a spinoff, but he gives her a kiss on the forehead and he hits the road. Drew, well, he's going to take that internship in Paris for the art district. And he tells Diana, I'm leaving as soon as we bury Monet. I'm on the road. She's like, Drew, you can't, you can't go. He's like, I got to. Well, maybe we get a Paris spinoff with Drew. And the last thing we see of Diana, she's sitting at the head of the table. 
because now the whole empire is hers the penthouse the house the bar the car whatever's left it goes to diana kane on the run drew and perry and now monet jr is born Braden and effie well their stories are a little bit different than we thought it would be effie and Braden come and talk to tariq Effie, you're now running all the business again. You took that from Braden, you're gonna run it on all the college campuses. So you need to get that course perfection up and running. Braden, people say it was a demotion. No, Braden is in charge of the fight club and in charge of the event. So he needs to find a new music group. So this is Braden's way of still being in the business, but not a partner. He's just working for Tariq. But if you think about it, he's basically getting put into a management situation. He's going to manage the fight clubs and any new artists they get to perform at any of their little parties. And the last thing we see of Tariq, he goes over to Chindu's place and he's saying, listen, how about you and I work together? Your sister's out the way. I have the best infrastructure. This is a robust operation that we can have here. And I'll be like a ghost. You won't even see me, but I got the best lawyer looking over all our money. I got the best way to move the product, Effie. I got the fight clubs that you can move a little bit in there also, Braden. So what's up? And you won't even have to worry about seeing me. I'll be a ghost. All right, there you go. The finale, four years, Power Book 2, Ghost. Man, what a time. Tariq did all of that, didn't even finish school, but he did start up a whole new operation in the end. He's getting his mom and Yaz about the city. I mean, I guess this is a good ending for Tariq. Now, we could also see a spinoff with Tariq going over to force as far as a crossover and then maybe later on we get a spin off of one of the Tejadas and Tariq might show up who knows at this point but that's it let me know what you think about the overall season I'm ODIJ if you like this kind of content hit that like button hit that subscribe button thanks for tuning in I'm out